Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Anything OU podcast with your boy, Chris and Drew. As always, I am your host, Christian Williams. I got my main man, my co-host, Drew England. Drew, how you doing? Hey, I'm great, man. Um, every day, ending in Y, it's a good day to be a Sooner. So. Oh, of course. Hey, and as Tyree says, I had I have to shout out my boy because he, he <laughs> hit me up the other day. More life, more blessings to you, Sooner Nation. But before we get in this video with Brady Braun, we got to tell you about our sponsor at www.hornsdownshop.com. If you want to pick up any of your cool OU gear that you cannot get on Campus Corner or anywhere else in Norman, and you want to support your boy Deshaun White like this t-shirt, you can do so at the first link in the description. Again, that's www.hornsdownshop.com. You can even support us too, as Drew has been flashing our If Lost or Turn a Tailgate t-shirt. We'd really appreciate if you guys go check them out. And uh, yeah, let's get in the video. Welcome back, everybody. We have Mr. Brady Braun with us. Brady, how you doing, man? Good. I'm glad to be on the show. Thanks for having me. You are totally welcome. We are happy to have you. So a little bit about Brady, if you do not know who he is. He was a kicker and punter in high school that was graded a five-star rating. And uh, he's he went to uh, considered fourth punter in the nation by Cole's professional camps and picked OU over Fordham and Buffalo. So, hey, I think you made the right decision, man. I, I don't know if they have it listed. I also had an offer from IU at the time. Oh, man. Hey, I so had that home state school. There you um, go. Yeah, that's true. That's the, Hoos true. the Hoosiers. The yep. Hoosiers. And it wasn't it wasn't a basketball scholarship. So you probably just, you know, were like, eh. It was. It, I, they brought me out for a basketball game. That's how they tried recruiting me. There you go. <laughs> that's usually what they do. Yeah. Hey, so let's get right into this, man. Tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, your background, football, that kind of stuff, just how you got into it. So I grew up in a small farm town about 100 miles from Indianapolis, about 100 miles north called Winnemac. I'm back there right now hanging out with my mom before I head down to college. And I played football. I started playing tackle back in third grade. And they kind of told me I was a little too chubby to play any skill position. <laughs> At the time, so I personally, personally for me, offensive line was not the way I wanted to go with my career. So I kind of looked into the uh, not getting hit category, which entailed kicking and punting. So I started actually kicking and punting in like the fourth grade. So I started it pretty early on in my career. And I actually heavy focused, like I naturally was better at punting, but I wanted to score points. Who, who doesn't want to score points? So I heavy <laughs> focused on kicking and I did that. Uh, I, I kicked actually all the way through my junior year, but then wow. a freshman year, I went to a boarding school where most of my family had went. So I kind of followed their footsteps. And then I actually didn't get to punt for the board for the, my team freshman and sophomore year. So I didn't get to punt again until my junior year. So freshman and sophomore year, I just kicked and I just didn't like the, I just didn't like everything going on. So I transferred and moved down with my father who I've had a great relationship with. And like, he's helped He's been on the field with me the most. I, he's retrieved punts for me ever since I can remember. So it was good being down with him. Uh, we kind of – it helped out because I could go out to the field whenever I needed to because we I was able to get out there and he could retrieve my punts and make the workout a whole lot smoother. And then I transferred down to Bishop Shatara where I go now with my father where we won a state championship my junior year. And they also did allow me to punt, which was a lot nicer being able to punt, saying I was ranked – the fifth punter in the country at the end of my freshman year. And I was still told I was not going to be allowed to punt. Uh, so I kind of <laughs> thought that was a little crazy. Um, I, yeah, I think so. <laughs> not really sure how that worked. Uh, so I kicked and punted junior year. And then I did the college circuit uh, June, uh, the summer before senior year. And then in July, I went to the Coles scholarship camp, which is their like big, huge camp in which I was named the Under Armour All-American and uh, the fourth punter in America. And then I carried that juice into my senior year. We unfortunately did not make it to the state game again, finished that. And then, Oh, you came late on my radar in January with the, or with the hiring of coach Nunez and they hired coach Nunez and the rest is history. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, That's awesome. real yeah. quick. What, what is it like to earn that rating of fourth best in, in the country? Like that is, there are so many people in the world. And you're number four. Like, uh, I kind of, once I got the five-star rating, I kind of threw it off to the side after 30 kids became five-star. And I started looking at the number. And when I got fourth, uh, 
I felt great because I looked at the three kids ahead of me and they were three of three of my good friends and they're legit punters. And I know that like those are three guys that I could go battle with day in and day out. And I think I think you could rearrange us in any order, probably, and have still a very valid chart. So but the fourth the fourth ranking was definitely it's easier to say top five off the tongue than top ten. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So when did you when did you realize that this was something that you could do like as a specialist like at the next level? Uh, if you talk to me and my dad, we say in fourth grade. But uh, when it legit started becoming like a real deal was when I got uh, when after my freshman year when I was ranked the fourth punter in the country after my freshman year. That's kind of when I realized okay, focus on punting. Still do kicking because my team's going to need it because you don't actually have an extra kicker usually in high school, which I got blessed that we did have an extra kicker my senior year. But just that punting became a legit opportunity would be at the end of my freshman year. I kind of all came full circle. And at the end of my junior year, I was looking at a little bit like, damn, am I actually going to get anything? Or like it was it was a slow recruiting process, but then it all it all turned out well for me. Yeah, awesome. for sure. Hey, so like you know you did get that ranking you did as well share you know a five-star rating with 30 other people all that fun stuff what has been your best you know your or even your favorite highlight of so far your career like what's that thing that just stands out above all else I'd love to say uh athletically like my accomplishments it would be like the all-american spot in winning state but just like where I had the most fun in my life yeah would be going to the camps with all those guys, all those other specialists, the bond we have with each other. There's nothing that would put more of a smile on my face than to go to another one of those camps with those guys and just spend three days punting with those guys and honestly spending three days with them off of the fields. The, the friendships and the bonds I've built in the specialist community would probably be like the highlight of the whole entire process. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And I know like sometimes specialists kind of, they kind of get like a weird rap because they're like, Oh, they're just quirky and superstitious and all that stuff. Um, was there any other sports that you played like growing up or, or even in high school or was it just specifically, you know, football? So I've done, I, I'm going to throw soccer out there, but I only did it up until I was like three. So I don't have really any soccer background. So when people ask me, I say, no, uh, I did racing actually with my cousin. Like we wrote raced cars. That's awesome. Um, I played baseball. I've played basketball. And then the sport that I played the next longest would have been, I did track and field. I threw discus and shot put. There in which go. I was actually pretty decent at discus. I'm fourth in my school history for discus. <laughs> Sounds like you're just four, man. That number's got you. <laughs> the number four is my specialty. I wore it actually freshman and sophomore year. I wore the number four. Good That's for you. Awesome. And so... I think the biggest question of our listeners is going to be why OU? You You know, you got recruited from other schools. Why did you choose to come all the way to Oklahoma? Well, as you saw, my other schools were in the north, so a little bit better weather. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Buffalo was not looking promising, Fordham. And then I've lived in Indiana for enough years, so the weather there is not pretty either. Uh, No. Um, Nunez and Venables, those two right there. Venables, just the way he spoke to me. Um, there wasn't a coach that spoke to me like he did and the way he resonated with me, but then the opportunity to be coached by Nunez, that was the biggest draw to uh, OU. Cause I remember when he, cause I was talking to Eastern Michigan purely for the idea of learning from coach Nunez. It wasn't Eastern Michigan was this great and awesome school. No offense to them. There's no yeah. comparison to, to IU, which I had an offer from and no comparison to now Oklahoma, but coach Nunez was, a drawing factor and then him going to Oklahoma was just it was a step up that he even still considered recruiting me even when he went from eastern Michigan to Oklahoma that step up he still saw something in me and I wanted to be coached by him yeah that's that's great and and you just spoke about you know the level of offers and and how it kind of comes up from Buffalo to IU to Oklahoma and speaking on that like how are you how excited are you to kind of come in and be one of the next, you know, hopefully great, you know, specialist at Oklahoma because we have a tradition of them. And then what excites you about learning from a guy like uh, Michael Turk? I, he's he's another big draw. I wouldn't 
I don't mind the fact that I have to probably sit on the bench for one year. It, it's not it, at worst. I sit on the bench for one year and learn from a future NFL punter yeah. and probably one of the best college punters. He's had an amazing college career in his years that he's been in it. Learning from him is, is honestly probably the best thing that I could do for a year is to learn from him and Nunez and put that together to create, to even blossom more, uh, hit my I'm nowhere near my peak and I think those guys can hurt or help me climb towards my peak but then to also then be able to show it in front of a big 12 crowd for one year and an SEC for the rest yeah I, going into those yeah. stadiums and then punting yeah. and then watching the team just lose it when I landed on the one like an SEC crowd will love that yeah, yeah. And Sooner Nation I mean, I mean, will love that too so yeah we, we will I will I will cheer for you every single time yeah. you land on the one that's that's for sure. And not even that, but like how great, like they're both such great people, you know, like aside from what you can learn on the football side of things, just the life aspect of both of them. Oh yeah. It's just amazing. Like those are the people you want to surround yourself with. I had one convert. I've only had one convert, like full on conversation with Turk. And it was like a little cut short because he was in between warm up or warm ups. He's taking a little break during the spring game. But even that conversation I had with him, just how genuine of a guy he is. I yeah. think surrounding myself with those type of people just off the field, it'll let me grow. And then on the field, I'll just have the more faith in myself to just better myself. Yeah. So how are you feeling about the coach Smitty workouts? What are, do they, do they scare you? <laughs> are, you, are, you are you ready it, for them? The only, the only worst part, it's, it's not the workout. It's that workout plus that Oklahoma heat that I just, I just don't see. Yeah. It, it's, I think that's, what's going to take me by storm is sure. I'm hitting a college workout and yes, that is absolutely going to just take me just out of nowhere, <laughs> but the heat that's going to come with it doing that workout plus adding in the heat that I've never seen. Yeah. I, I've started praying already. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I think it's, they, it's hey, ruthless. I'm telling nobody, you. That. Nobody has died yet. So yeah, hey, you'll, be, you'll be all right. There's always a first though. That's the problem. That That <laughs> is, that's very true. <laughs> so let, let me ask you this. Now like you, you talked about praying and stuff like that and, and, um, but what, who or what like motivates you to do what you do and everyday life, just not, not even including punting, but just, you know, how you live your life. My, so my grandfather was put in a wheelchair at the age of six, which kind of limited the stuff that he did. And even watching him accomplish everything that he's accomplished or everything that he did accomplish. Um, just knowing that if you put your mind towards it, that you will have the ability. So watching my grandfather, of seeing what he accomplished throughout his life it just makes me realize that i that he strengths he strengthens me to accomplish what i can yeah no that's, yeah, that's amazing cool. yeah that's a good that's a good uh motivation for not only football but for right now in life and for the rest of life to know mm -hmm. that no excuses if you want something go out and get it and that's just that's just how crazy life is, is that it's that simple, but it's just, you just got to work for it. You just got to work for it. And that, I love that quality about you. And um, that's kind of like the standard of Oklahoma is just work for it. You know, let's, let's get after it. And I love yeah. that. So what is the best, you know, you, what motivated you stuff like that, but there's gotta be some good advice you've heard along the way. What's the best advice you've ever been told and again, it can be football. It can be just you took it into football about life, just anything. My grandpa's favorite quote was rise above, which can mean so many different things. Rise yeah. above everybody else. Put 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 your work ethic above what everybody else is doing. Rise above theirs or rise above all of the problems you have in your life. Rise above all of the struggles. So I just think rise above because of all the different like meanings it can have. It can apply to like anything you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's great. That's a, that's something that that we always I think lose sight of sometimes is is you know those those things that motivate us and having those things in our mind constantly that push us along even when we really don't have anybody else. Sometimes it's 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 our words and how we encourage ourselves to do that. I like that. That's a, that's yeah. awesome. So, 
little little bit more more of a fun uh, uh, question. This one's gonna for catch you, you off little, guard. Yeah, try to try to hit you off guard a little bit. But we ask uh, all of our all of our guests uh, this question. Um, it's like a two part. Christian will hit you with another one, but it's like a one two punch. What is your favorite food? Favorite food? Steak and mac and cheese. It's a it's a yes, sir. Yes, steak and mac I like and cheese. It. Ask my, my mom, mom, are you shocked I didn't ask for steak and mac and cheese this week? <laughs> are you shocked I didn't ask for steak and mac and cheese? That's my chicken and mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> like there I said, go. steak and mac and cheese is my comfort meal. <laughs> that's great. I'm with you. That's that's a good one. Good choice. Dude, I love it. You're like a meat and potatoes kind of guy. That's amazing. Yep. And we have potatoes tonight. <laughs> we have potatoes in tonight. Let's go. Hey, so another one, you know, you got to have breakfast in there somewhere. So what is your favorite cereal? My favorite cereal? Lucky Charms. Who doesn't like marshmallows? Like, Dude, yes. Nice, nice little <laughs> sweet taste, but Lucky Charms would have to be like my top tier cereal. If I see that, nothing else is getting shows. Absolutely. Hey, and so as a college student, this is my last question for you. As a college student, football aside, what are you going to be majoring in? And, uh, you know, what, what are you going to be studying? So I first have it down as sports business. Hey, that's likely, what I'm doing. It'll likely get changed to something more broad or something different in the business department. But I have been looking into the, like the communications aspect because I look at it like after college, I could go into coaching because I have yep. been in the special teams. I have been in the special teams department for way too many years now. I know a lot about special teams. So could I coach special teams or just coach like kicking and punting? So I've looked into communications for like a coaching uh, job after yeah. college. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. Good for you. Good, good stuff. That's good awesome, dude. Yeah, I, will, I won't be too far away from you. I just got enrolled in classes yesterday. I took a two-year break and I am going to OCCC, so Oklahoma City Community. So I'm 20 minutes, mm -hmm. I'll be 20 minutes away from where you are. So no, that's not bad. No, no, not at all. Well, hey, Brady, we appreciate you for coming on, man. Go get you some of that meat and potatoes, and <laughs> you are always welcome back. Appreciate you all for having me. Yes, yeah. sir. Hey, good luck coming coming in this summer. I'm, I'm sure you'll do great. So we love we love having you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Have a good one, Brady. See you. That's been everything on the Anything You podcast with your boy, Chris Andrew. As always, I'm your host, Christian Williams, and I've got my main man, my co-host, Mr. Drew England. Drew, you got anything you want to leave the people with? Hey, as always, hey, thank you guys so much for your support, for your likes, for your follows. If you haven't yet, go down here, uh, subscribe to the channel, please. Uh, give us your feedback, comments, all that. Hit that bell for notifications. Always got something good coming out every week. And... Hey, as always, Christian, you know what I'm going to hit him with? Boomer. Sooner. <laughs> <laughs>